Questions? Yes? Yeah, uh, I have a few questions. This is very interesting theory, actually. Uh -huh. uh, right, the hypothesis. And you're right, you're correct. It's <laughs> a so hypothesis, not a theory. Yeah, right. Um, because you need to prove a few other things before you can make it a theory. I'm sorry? You have to prove a few things. You have to make a, a, a evidence before you can make it a theory. So let's make it like, a, let's say, it's just a hypothesis. First of all, you're, you're, I totally agree with you. It's not a theory, <laughs> it's, it's a hypothesis. <laughs> we, are proposing, we are proposing a physical right. Uh, object that underlies all light phenomena. The theory, the e evidence right. that you're looking for, the test, the, the uh, you know, the experiments that you're looking for, are these experiments. They have already been done. Yeah. Now we're trying to explain them. <laughs> we're trying to say, what causes this magic? And what causes them, I'm saying, is not the particle, not the wave, but a rope. With a rope, we can explain all of these. With a particle, we have to go into we're going to give a physical interpretation, we have to go into some kind of uh, abstraction. We, we can do it mathematically, but not physically. So you are saying that every way is filled, every way, the space is filled with a visible rope. I'm saying that every atom in the universe is connected to all other atoms via electromagnetic ropes, right? Or you can call them threads, twine threads. And yes, so there's so much matter out there that you will see the background oh. radiation are these oh. ropes that are in the way. <laughs> there is, you know, we, we turn space into a physical object and say, oh, space is curved, space uh, has this background radiation. No, it's the threads that cross space that have it. Okay, it's a different space. model. Yeah, right, right. Um, I completely agree with you. Uh -huh. But there is this, um, uh, I want to show opinion on the single photon um, double suit experiment. How do you explain that? The uh, single photon. photon? Yeah, the question is whether we're handling a. The question is whether we're handling a f single photon. <coughs> we, we, did, we did it with the electron. We did it with the photon. Can someone draw an electron for me? No one can draw an electron for me because as soon as they draw an electron, they're going to draw a little ball, maybe, a little point. So are we saying that the electron is something that orbits the nucleus, like Mr. Bohr said? hundred years ago, right. nobody accepts this model. But then we we'll use this model when we go into give a physical inter interpretation to ionization or to electricity, what do we have? We take that little ball and we make it fly out and we say, well, this is an ion or this is electricity. Well, we're using Bohr's model, but nobody agrees with Bohr's model. But that's what we use. So the question is, you know, are we handling single photons? Are we handling single electrons? I'm saying we don't because neither the uh, photon, neither the electron is a ball. Unless you're willing to put your hand in the fire for it and say, yeah, it's a ball or a little cube or whatever, I'll, I'll agree. Well, there is this uh, university in Hong Kong, actually. They managed to produce, they claim... Uh, I'm this, sorry. This university claimed that they can produce a single photon. Yeah, in fact, so, I, I read two right. articles at least. One, Gavli, the other one, Tanamura in Japan. And they say not photons, but that they handle single electrons. And again, please draw an electron for me. Then we'll worry about your explanation. And no one can draw an electron for me. Completely agree. Completely agree. <laughs> Only the, the question now is how do we explain the result of this experiment using, singles, uh, using single photons? If it's a single photon, right. or if it's a, or if maybe we're looking at something else, maybe. Let me show you. Go back here. What we're seeing is a I mean, what we're looking at is a single link of the rope. If this moves or propagates along the rope, we look at that as a signal, and we call that signal a quantum. Here we have a unit of something that's moving. But what is it? It's the torsion of a rope, and we're sensing the movement of that torsion along the rope. So, you know, can we explain it, you know, with a rope? Yes. Because it's, it's the same thing as if you would explain with a wave or a particle. There is really no difference in that sense. Whatever you can explain with one, you will be able to explain with the other. The question is, how do we determine, how do we establish the difference between the rope and the wave or the particle? It's still quite difficult. 
And again, the particle cannot answer gravity. We, cannot, we have no solution to pull. We don't have the force of pulling quantum mechanics. There's no way to pull with particle. You don't throw little balls at someone and expect the pressure. The only way you can produce pull is with a continuous mechanism that unites one atom to the other. This is interesting. I will talk to you later. Yes. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes? Uh, you call it electromagnetic rope. Yep. And at the same time, you are, uh, in a way, discarding the ADM theory of light? Uh, well, I'm, I'm saying that we have a new model of light. And it should be considered at least in parallel with the other two because this is a valid model, at least, for some of the basic uh, behaviors of light. Well, another thing that you say is that draw a photon or electron for me. But you say that the light connects two atoms. How a rope, say a that rope connects, a rope connects, connects the two light, atoms. You can call the light the torsion moving along the rope. So again, if somebody asks that draw an atom for me, then how will it be set? Uh, the atom is part of the model, but it's beyond because the scope of this presentation. The there is a model. Um, each thread turns into one, what I would call the magnetic thread, turns into the electron shell. And the, uh, uh, and the electric thread goes through the atom. We have a little ball with a sea urchin inside it. It's a different kind of model for the, the atom as well. The electron is an abstraction? No, I'm we're not talking about abstraction. An abstraction is something that has no shape. Here I'm talking about something physical that unites every atom. The reason I can jump and fall back to Earth is I'm tied to every atom on Earth. But one thing is clear that all these concepts are associated in one way or the other with energy concept. So except, that's except, but again, we're not talking about a concept. Concept has no shape. Love has no shape. We're talking about a physical object, something that has shape. Exactly, but to present that we have to make use of certain abstraction. Yeah, yeah. well, our minds, of course, we have to think in abstract mode. What I'm saying is we're trying to conceptualize. Well, that's very interesting. It may be a We're just trying to conceptualize what light might look like that can perform these magic tricks. And for that, the rope model, I think, is at least on the par with the other two. <laughs> I have to ask you if it is consistent it is it is not tied up this thing but single single part of it. It, it, is it, tied up. it is in this sense and next we, can, we can say we can say that the unit this photon is a unit of the rope moving along the rope we are able to see that speed we are able to measure that speed when the light finally hits our eye the atoms in our eye but why because we have if you turn a rope you will see how fast the, the signal travels first, and it causes pressure at the, at the far end. If you just twist the rope, it will cause some pressure. That's the pressure we sense as light. And each one of those pulses is a photon. <laughs> okay. Thank you very yeah, much sure. for the nice talk. I think many people are excited about the model of different I would like to invite Abdul Qadir, thank you.